I need you to stop and really think about this for a second. What if every single choice you've ever made created an entirely new universe? What if there are billions of other versions of you out there living completely different lives and you have no idea they exist? Now, most people think the multiverse is just Hollywood nonsense, but here's what nobody tells you. Quantum mechanics, the most battle-tested theory in all of physics, actually suggests this could be happening. By the end of this video, I guarantee you will understand quantum mechanics better than anyone else you know, and honestly, it might keep you up tonight if you're captivated by the mystery of the quantum multiverse and want to see more mind-bending explorations of reality, smash that like button and let the universe know you're watching. Who knows, every click helps keep the search for the unknown alive. Before I explain how you could theoretically live forever, we need to go back to where this all started. And trust me, even the greatest minds in history were completely baffled by what they discovered. Our story begins in the early 1900s when physicists were first piecing together quantum mechanics. We're talking about Einstein, Planck, Schrodinger, absolute legends of science, all working together to crack the code of how the universe really works at its smallest level. And the theory they developed, it worked remarkably well. By treating light as both a particle and a wave at the same time, they started solving problems that had stumped scientists for decades. But here's the thing nobody talks about. There was one massive problem lurking beneath the surface. What quantum mechanics was implying about reality was so strange, so supernatural, that even the scientists who created it couldn't believe what they were seeing. See, in classical physics, the kind you learned in school, everything is exact. We can measure precisely where the Earth is. We can calculate exactly how fast a rocket is flying. We can tell you exactly how much you weigh down to the decimal. Everything has a definite, measurable value. Makes sense, right? But in quantum mechanics, none of that is true. Instead, everything is measured with probabilities. Physicists use something called the wave function to figure out the likelihood of each possible outcome. So imagine I could be in three different places at once. The wave function might say there's a 25% chance I'm over here, 25% chance I'm over there, and 50% chance I'm somewhere else entirely. Until you actually look at me, I'm essentially in all three places at the same time. Now in the 1920s, two brilliant physicists named Niels Bohr and Werner Heisen Heisenberg came up with an explanation for how this works. They claim that the wave function collapses to just one of these possible results the moment an observer looks at it. This became known as the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, and that feels weird, doesn't it? Why would we need to observe something for it to have a definite value? What's so special about looking at it? Even Einstein thought this was absurd. He famously said that God does not play dice with the universe. This is actually where the famous Schrodinger's cat experiment came from. Uh, Schrodinger didn't like this collapse idea at all, so he created this thought experiment to show just how ridiculous it was. Put a cat in a box with a quantum mechanism that could either kill it or not. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, until you open that box and look inside, the cat is literally both dead and alive at the same time. Not metaphorically, literally, but how can that possibly be true? So scientists scrambled to find different explanations. Maybe it's human consciousness itself that causes the wave function to collapse. Maybe we're somehow special. But here's the frustrating part. The equations worked perfectly. Without quantum mechanics, we wouldn't have computers. We wouldn't have Wi-Fi. We wouldn't have GPS, smartphones, or even the screen you're watching this on right now. The math was undeniably correct. It just made no sense. And this is where things get really interesting. In the middle of all this confusion, a young American physicist was about to propose something so radical, so shocking, that it would change everything. 
What if the wave function never collapses at all? What if instead every possible outcome actually happens just in different universes? And let me explain exactly how this works. Because once you understand this, you'll never see reality the same way again. Imagine we have a single electron that's about to move. It can either go left or go right. In the traditional Copenhagen interpretation, these two possibilities exist together in what's called a superposition inside the wave function. There's some percentage chance it goes left, some chance it goes right. When we observe the electron to see which direction it actually went, the wave function collapses. One option wins, one universe survives, and the other possible future simply never exists. And, but what if we take a completely different approach? What if when that electron faces its two options, the universe itself splits into two separate, equally real universes? In one universe, the electron goes left. In the other, it goes right. Both outcomes happen. Both universes exist. Physicists call this process branching, and here's the mind-bending part. Once this branching happens, those two universes can never interact with each other again. They're completely cut off, forever. And considering how many particles exist in our universe, constantly moving around, constantly facing these quantum decisions, this branching is happening all the time at an insanely high rate. We're talking practically infinite new universes being created every single moment. So which universe are you in right now? Well, your consciousness can be thought of as just a passenger riding along one of these infinite paths through the multiverse. Alternate versions of you exist on their own unique paths, each one experiencing a different version of reality and none of them ever overlapping with yours. This is the part where my brain completely broke the first time I heard it. And here's what's even crazier. This isn't some wild speculation. This is just taking seriously what quantum mechanics actually predicts. It's not adding anything extra. No extra worlds. No extra assumptions. The math simply suggests this is what's happening. But this radical new approach is called constantly moving around, constantly facing these quantum decisions. This branching is happening all the time at an insanely high rate. We're talking practically infinite new universes being created every single moment. So which universe are you in right now? Well, your consciousness can be thought of as just a passenger riding along one of these infinite paths through the multiverse. Alternate versions of you exist on their own unique paths, each one experiencing a different version of reality and none of them ever overlapping with yours. This is the part where my brain completely broke the first time I heard it. And here's what's even crazier. This isn't some wild speculation. This is just taking seriously what quantum mechanics actually predicts. It's not adding anything extra. No extra worlds. No extra assumptions. The math simply suggests this is what's happening. But this radical new approach is called drugged and kept using the Copenhagen interpretation like nothing happened. In fact, this is still what I got taught at university just two years ago. Everett was so discouraged that he left academia completely. He never published in physics again. But here's where the story takes a dark and fascinating turn. In his later years, Everett may have actually bet his own life on his theory being true. I'll tell you exactly what that means in just a moment. But first, we need to address the one massive problem that many worlds still hadn't solved. If the wave function never actually collapses, like Everett claimed, and then why does it appear to collapse every single time we run an experiment? All of our laboratory results point toward this collapse being real. Every measurement we've ever made seems to confirm it. So what's really going on? Well, in the 1970s, there came, came a breakthrough that changed everything. When you have a quantum system completely isolated from the outside world, meaning it's not interacting with anything around it, the information inside the wave function behaves in simple, predictable wave patterns. 
Scientists can easily measure and solve these patterns to understand what's happening. This nice clean state is called coherence. But here's the problem. The moment you take that quantum system into the real world, where it has to interact with atoms, photons of light, temperature, and all the messy stuff that makes up our environment, something dramatic happens. That quantum system becomes unavoidably entangled with everything around it. The simple patterns vanish beneath all the noise. This process is called decoherence. And decoherence is the key that unlocks the many worlds interpretation. It explains why we never see this blur of contradictory outcomes when we look at something. The alternative possibilities quickly become entangled with the environment, giving us just one clear result. A Copenhagen believer would look at this and say, it just looks like the wave function collapsed. But many worlds tells us something far more subtle actually happened. But decoherence locked each possible outcome into its own separate, non-interacting universe. The multiverse formed right in front of us, and we just couldn't see it. This was exactly what many worlds needed to become a legitimate, viable theory. It kept all the successes of the Copenhagen interpretation while removing the weirdness that bothered Einstein and Schrodinger. There's no special role for the observer anymore, no magical collapse, just physics doing what physics does. And the scientific community started to take notice. When you poll physicists today, the many worlds interpretation is endorsed by around 20% of them, still second to Copenhagen, but its popularity keeps rising year after year. Think about that. One in five physicists believes you and I exist in a constantly branching multiverse with infinite versions of ourselves. And things have gotten even more interesting now that quantum computers are emerging. Some scientists argue that quantum computers are literally indirect evidence that this multiverse exists. Here's why. In classical computers, like the device you're using to watch this video, use bits to perform calculations. Each bit is either a zero or a one, simple. But quantum computers use something completely different. They use qubits, which harness the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Instead of being either zero or one, each qubit exists in a superposition of both zero and one at the same time. This allows quantum computers to run multiple calculations simultaneously, in parallel. David Deutsch, one of the biggest supporters of many worlds, takes this a step further. If you have a quantum computer with 300 qubits performing a calculation, you're essentially running two to the power of 300 classical calculations at the same time. That's more calculations than there are atoms in the observable universe. And here's the wild part. Deutsch says these calculations are literally being performed across parallel universes. Different branches of the multiverse are doing the computational work together. That's why quantum computers are so unbelievably powerful compared to classical ones. They're borrowing processing power from other realities. Okay? Now, if all of this is actually true, if the quantum multiverse is constantly branching and creating new versions of you and me with every passing moment, it raises a question that has haunted physicists for decades. You know, do we ever actually die? This brings us to quantum immortality. And I have to warn you, this is where things get really strange. Imagine two branches of the universe representing a terrible accident like a car crash. In one branch, you died. In the other branch, you survived. Believers in quantum immortality would say that your con consciousness naturally navigates this branching, always following the path where you survive. The other version of you dies, sure, but your conscious experience continues in the universe where you made it through. Now, now most physicists treat this as just a fun thought experiment, but some people took, a, took it far more literally. Remember Hugh Everett, the physicist who created the many worlds interpretation? The one who was dismissed by Bohr and left physics forever? According to people who worked with him and his own family members, 
Everett firmly believed that his many worlds theory guaranteed him immortality. He believed his consciousness would always follow whichever branch of the universe didn't lead to his death. He never wrote this down in any of his papers, but secondhand accounts from colleagues and family paint a picture of a man who genuinely believed he would never truly die. His consciousness would simply keep branching into realities where he survived. This is, of course, incredibly controversial. It pushes far beyond what the many worlds interpretation technically claims. But it's worth sitting with this idea for a moment. Think about your own life. Have you ever had a near-death experience? A moment where you probably should have died but somehow didn't? A car accident you walked away from? An illness that mysteriously cleared up? A close call that you still can't explain? What if those moments weren't luck at all? What if they were branches in the quantum multiverse where you just happened to be the version that survived? <laughs> in countless other universes, other versions of you weren't so fortunate. But your consciousness, your experience of being you, simply continued down the branch where you made it through. It sounds insane, it sounds like something from a movie, but the mathematics of quantum mechanics doesn't rule it out. And 20% of working physicists believe the multiverse is real. Okay? So the next time you narrowly avoid disaster, the next time something goes your way against all odds, maybe stop and wonder, maybe you just branched into another universe. Maybe another version of you wasn't so lucky. And maybe, just maybe, your consciousness has been doing this your entire life without you ever knowing. The universe is far stranger than we ever imagined. And the craziest part, we're only just beginning to understand it. Don't stop here. The universe is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Click on the next video and join us as we explore. Even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of space.